I think older men with full heads of hair look they they it it doesn't help them. It doesn't make them look masculine. What does it make them look? Feminine. Really? I think older men with a lot of hair look very feminine to me. You should have you should be losing some hair. Well, good, thank you. You should be at least receding. Yeah. Or maybe a patch in the back. Like a Tom Papa? It gives you a little gives you a little yeah, a perfect example when I say it gives you a little masculinity. Tom so Papa. Uh, Colin Quinn? Colin Quinn? Colin Quinn, people think he's sexy. Yeah. You don't like that. George Clooney, look at this guy. You don't like that? No. Oh, that guy is good. That he's got cuz he's he's George Clooney. Look at George Clooney. Boom. I mean, you don't like I that. I bet he looks he looks nice there cuz somebody's done him up, but I bet you in the morning when you go and look at him, plus he has a beard, but Yeah. What about Brad Pitt? Look at Brad Pitt. Hey, listen, you're allowed to believe whatever you want to believe, man. I'm just telling you what I think. I'm just proving your theory wrong. I think thinning hair is he, and he's got a little bit of a receding hairline there. Yeah. And he's probably got a space wig. There's no way. Brad Pitt. Look at Brad him. Brad Pitt's receding. Mm. But he had but a it good... It also gets... Like, he's got too much hair. He should... He should. It starts to look feminine. Because yeah. he doesn't have a beard. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Now that I'm looking at him, he kind of looks like a hot older woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brad Pitt looks like my aunt. Yeah. <laughs> The life of a stand-up comedian is crazy. You're going nonstop. You're staying up until dawn. You're dreaming about comedy. And then you wake up thinking about comedy. But running yourself into the ground will never work. It doesn't. You need to make sure you're getting a good night's sleep when you can. And that goes for anybody, not just comics. That's where Ghostbed can help. Ghostbed mattresses are designed with a premium materials and patented cooling features so you sleep better cooler, and more comfortable from the moment your fat head hits the pillow. So take advantage of free shipping, 101-night mattress sleep trial, and financing starting at 35 bucks a month. Most orders ship within 24 hours, so you can start sleeping better this week. Listeners get 40% off all products site-wide. You get 40% off a mattress, adjustable base, and bedding accessories, or 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code YKWD at ghostbed.com slash YKWD for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. Yeah, baby, we're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude, live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKWD. I started the social media podcast. <laughs> the fact. The YKWD podcast. YKWD's back again. Old school, back in the day, where it all started. Before them all, YKWD. YKWD. This podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up. You're no. ruining this. Where's the ball man? Sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. What's up, everybody? It's Robert Kelly. We're back for another episode of You Know What, Dude Podcast. Stop acting like you haven't been in show business. Like You don't understand what's going on. Every comic sits in there, and they can't stand that I am talking to the camera. They all, f it's not on me. Bring it back on me. It's coming, B. It's coming. No, uh, I got a great guest this week. First of all, I want to say all the Patreon members, you're watching this live. You're in the chat. Thanks for being a member of the Patreon. If you're a member of the YouTube, subscribe if you're not. Hit the subscribe button, comment, and like, 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 like. And also, Robert Kelly Live and the YKWD Instagram and social media. Hit it all up. We got a very special guest today. I haven't had it on in a while. I, I've, I've, I've never had it on by solo, which I'm happy. Uh, but I've been getting a phone call not uh, nonstop for the last ten minutes that I'm going to have to take. Oh, really Bonnie, calling. please, Bonnie McFarlane, everybody, give it up. What's up, Bonnie? How are you? Yes, uh, I I don't know what what's he doing. I don't know. I guess he wants to talk to you. But why can't he? Why did, he knows you're on, right? He loves you. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, <laughs> you're the one with the hair. Yes, we're we're in our fifties. Yes, we can hear you. Well, are you doing your podcast already? <laughs> I mean, uh, what are you is, doing? yeah, we're on. We're yeah, on. The, we're on right you're now. You're on the air. You're babe. on the air right now. Long time Whoa, listener. This is long cool. time caller. Now this, this is, is. Can I? I'm going to tell everybody I got to do Bobby Kelly's podcast. Well, I'm on with your wife right now. Yeah. yeah well, who canceled? 
Oh, Richard, I was sticking up for you. Oh, I'm sorry. My how how funny is she? Did you watch her? We before? haven't even started yet. You've been calling me, so I was like, I got to get this out of the way. Oh mm-hmm. no, I thought you were doing your podcast when I called you, and I wanted to say how funny she was. We're doing uh, the podcast. We said we when? were. And you said she's not funny. You did the exact opposite that you said you were going to do. Yeah. I never said she's not funny. What did I say? She's not Who funny. Who canceled? Who canceled? You changed. Oh, I called to Oh, say no, that was for the podcast, not her stand up. Oh. Like, she, <laughs> her stand up. Like, I know she opened for you. I'm sure she killed. She killed. Yes. She killed. She, li- she just sits in bed and writes. Like, who does that? I don't know. I wish you I did. Mean, I wish jokes. you wrote this I conversation girls down. Girls that, that like cock. Girls <laughs> who like cock, she God, said. They don't sit around in their bed and write. Uh, you were funny when you called uh, the club when I was on stage. I, can I, I'm going to, this is, I, yeah. listen, I'm going to hang I out. Like I gotta, I'll call you no, later. No, no, no. I gotta, listen, I'm going to pack boxes. Why do you need to be a part of this right now? No, I'm bored. I, I was yeah, I don't. you. I mean, what the fuck, Bonnie? It's hey, I you know people sometimes say I'm too hard on him, but you see you you've talked to him for one minute. You're like, no, you should well, hit him. Yeah. 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 You should keep the old house and the new house. You take the new house. He keeps uh, the old we're one. We're two houses away from oh, being homeless. <laughs> Are you done? Can I talk to your wife for an hour? Yeah, I was hoping you. I don't know why you're bothering me. I gotta go. Goodbye. I mean, he. It's a lot. A lot. Can we be honest? Yeah, let's be honest. He's a lot. <laughs> he's I, like I know we joke. No, I know but we... he's a lot. He really is, and I feel like uh, I, I I feel like I've done a I've done a great job with him. This is I I know some people look at him. They say mm, you could have done better. I don't think so. I think this is the top. This is the most I could do. No, what, no, you had that getting. actor from Canada. No, I mean, this is the most I could do with... With him. Rick. Yeah, this is as far as you could take him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, to the end. You took him to the end. Right. Yeah, a couple of years. Here's the thing. He gets mad at me and you. Yeah. Every time us three are together, he gets mad at us. Yeah. But not jokingly. No. He, seriously. He's thrown cake in a serious way. Do you remember <clears throat> that? That was like kind of scary. That was on camera. He couldn't control himself. Because he thought we, he thinks we gang up on him. Yeah, because he thinks that it's just me that has a problem with him. Yeah. Like, he doesn't realize, like, no, ask 100 people, you're going to get 100. Ask the closest people to you. Yeah. (laughs) We all have a problem with you. (laughs) Ask everybody who loves you. Right. We all have a problem with you, Rich. (laughs) He's, uh, yeah, he's a horrible human being. Yeah, I know. But, I I mean, he's one of the, he's just... So, I don't know. He's very funny. It's like a dog with a fucked up eye and a broken tail. Yes. You don't want it, but it shows up every day. So, you're like, all right, come on in. Right? Sometimes at night, I, I live and I think about him and I start crying. It's like, <laughs> it's like, you know, I watch like dog rescue videos at night. And I have sometimes the same thing about <laughs> He's just He's in the room next to you. Yeah. Just going back and forth like one of those dogs in the cage. I just wouldn't want to be in that brain, man. That's got there's a lot going on in there. Why well, now you guys I never I, I'm starting to understand it now that I've been married for sixteen years almost sixteen yeah. years. Okay. Because a lot a lot of the nights I go to bed and she's in Max's bed. Right. You guys he sleeps in a different room than you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Why? I, I'm starting to understand it a little bit, but he has his own bedroom, but this is what disturbs me about it. Yeah, he decorated it. He's he likes he. First of all, okay, uh, let me explain the. He bedroom did, he has thing. an in sync poster the on there and a Led Zeppelin poster. Yes. Like it's his room. Yes. Yes. So number one, neither one of us would ever sleep if we sh- when 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 we shared a room. Lots of times he would sleep on the couch anyway because he's up and down all night. It's like different sleeping patterns. I just don't understand why people have to sleep together. It's insane. It's bizarre. If you like sleeping together, sleep together. And if you're a person who likes, uh, you know, I like to have the window open. You know, he used to come to bed in a full tracksuit. What? Because it would be too cold in there for him. I, I can relate to that. My yeah. wife, she wants the windows open in the winter. Yes. Yes. And she kicks the covers off. Yes. And she, when she kicks so the covers off, like, she kicks them off of me. 
Yeah, I have to you're sleep. not fucking twins. Get your own room. I mean, don't you deserve it in life? So you're saying I get my. I don't. I love sleeping with my wife. I love the the. the so be- go into her room and cuddle with her, and then get your fucking ass out. <laughs> Get a good night's sleep. Why do we sleep with each other? Is it like a religious thing or? Some- why do I yeah. know? I don't even know why. Like that's actually that's great. Let's let's go back to why it started. You know. Well, it was re- I, Dick Van Dyke. They slept in separate beds. Right. Remember that? Pretty smart. She slept over here. He slept over there. Mm-hmm. So. But that wasn't reality. That was just for TV. But it, they would go. What at the time? That's what people did. You had two separate beds because of religion. But in the same room. Huh? Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Twin know, beds, man. too. People have twin know. beds. I don't but know. In the last, like, hundred years, we've become so excessive. It's like we have a California king. We have the biggest bed right. you could possibly right. have. Right. And people started. I have a king bed, and, and Rich has a queen bed. He's definitely a queen. Yeah. yeah. He definitely, he, that sounds right. What is this? Those two beds aren't in the same room? I right, read that. Uh, that in the... In the from the 1850s to the 1950s, separate beds were seen as healthier, uh, more modern options for couples uh, than uh, and then in the same bed. So when did we start sleeping? What I think after the 50s. So the 1950s, we started sleeping in the same bed. Yeah, or the 60s. It was like fuck it. Let's, they probably fucked and just got too lazy to jump back in I their own bed. I think people were in the same bed. I think that's bullshit. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. You think the int- wait? First of all, you think the internet is bullshit? Yes. He just Googled it, Bonnie. Uh, listen. Bonnie, he Googled the question, and it came up with the facts, and they're right there. Yeah, wow. Well, How is that bullshit? I, you know what? I don't take everything that's given to me and go, oh, fact. I think for myself. I, that's, I mean, that's facts to me. No. It's right there. No. Married couples really sleep in separate beds back in the day, yes. In the 60s? No. <sighs> It doesn't bother you that he has this. He he. Look at if. Okay, he, but then okay. So then there's a second part to this query. Is oh, okay. Love, we sleep. I love in, when you get an intelligent. Uh, I like it. <laughs> thank you for having me on your I'm show. I'm so glad you're here. We needed this. Um, we needed the intelligent. Yes. Yeah, so we needed the, the that side of the I comedy like genre. So stupid. But um, do you ever think about like if you had to argue with somebody about like if if a flat earther came in here, I would just have to hand it to them. Like I wouldn't even. If, if a flat earther was like, why is it round? You'd be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a globe growing up. Here's the problem with me. I, you can flip me in five seconds. Yeah. I've gone on the internet and I was a fuck you liberal. And, and the next day I'm like a fucking Republican. These motherfuckers. Right, you're... And one day I'm like, maybe they didn't go to the moon. And the oh, next... no. I've... You don't think they went to the moon? I mean... I watched a documentary where I was like, they did not go to the moon. And then I was saying that in a green room and a comedian goes, you really believe they didn't go to the moon? And I go, no, I'm just kidding. Like, I just. <laughs> Me too. I won't. I won't. Yeah. I get nervous. But of being secretly, I that... still sort of think they didn't go to the moon. Well, it's like, I, I think I watched the same documentary <laughs> and I'm like, Dana. I always told my Don, did you know? I yeah. feel bad because I'm filling my wife's head with dumb shit. Oh, I do this to Rich all the time. <laughs> it's your fault. Poor it's you. Rich. You're the person. I try to. I try to go gently on certain things because. Oh, he showed up a bunch of times. Going, did you know? And I'm like, oh, but he had a talk with Bonnie. There's no way he knew. <laughs> yeah. If he's going, did you know? Somebody else told him something. <laughs> did you know that the sun? Shut up! You didn't know either. Bonnie right. said something. It's a firmament. But mm. I, I, there's too much information, and there's, there's, you can, you can find. Like, if you think you have cancer, you can find something that says you have cancer. Well, tr- 100% true. But also, the minute you, like, once I start, like, watching conspiracy videos, you know, on Instagram, it just keeps coming and coming. It's like, yeah. it's almost hard to not be radicalized. They fuck. Listen, I went on Facebook. My whole Facebook is right wing. It's all uh, Fox News. It's like I I want to hear some other shit. Right. So I have to I have to go find it. Right. And and watch a bunch of clips, and then it goes the other way. Right. Right. Like sometimes I'll just leave it on something to like play, 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 play over and over, so that like it's like oh she really liked that stuff. <laughs> I had 
zit, popping zit videos for like a month and a half. Yeah. That's all that came up on my Facebook feed. And you get so, I don't know if it's lazy. You just like, you flip it on. You're like, oh God, that's a crazy zit. Oh, look at those blackheads. I know. Oh, is that a foot? And you're just in it, and you just no, wind up watching. Because I hated Instagram until I started realizing, like, you know, I was getting like the conspiracy videos. Right. And then now I'm always on it because I love. I go to bed at night. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know why. I just love like when they go. First of all, the biggest conspiracy of the conspiracy videos <laughs> is that there's a guy who did a video, and then another guy that just goes like this. <laughs> yeah, the pe these people. They don't say a word. Sometimes they don't even do it the whole time. They'll just pop their head in. They just do that. I yeah. Had. And it's like 300,000 likes. You're like, you go into the comments, it's every person being like, who's the real guy? Please tag that man. Who's the real person that did it? It's like, I want to start doing wanna these videos. Yes. I want to do them with other people, comics jokes. Yeah, yes. They're I was thinking about that. It's just like some other <laughs> It's so funny that that's the. I want you no, to take I'm this gonna, right I'm here. I'm gonna do. I'm take, gonna. Yeah. Take me a bite. Look at that camera right there. Look at that camera right there. Just come over here. Do this. We're gonna give him a nod. <laughs> it's it's almost like thank God there was somebody nodding. I wouldn't have known to believe that. <laughs> oh, now that they've now that I saw one other person nod about it, I'm like I'm deep in. And you know they got that from some guy going. You know what you got to do now. Yeah. Watch other and and make sure you point up right. and go on a green screen. Well, he wants that. That well, they teach you. There's like guys. Oh, oh I started like, following guys that are like tell you what the trends are. Right, right. Take this music now. Go like this. Yeah. Oh, I I was watching. There's another guy. But the, but you can you be the guy that does the pointing and then I want to do you. I want to point at you. Okay. Okay. Right. Pointing at the guy. I'm gonna point at the guy. You point at me. <laughs> okay. Okay, there. Now people know what to do. Gonna, please take a video of. And then we'll do it. You'll put it over a Danny. Can we do it? No, we, a Danny video? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Danny doing stand up. Please make that video. Post it. Do it. Uh, watch it get seven million, million views and we become famous. We're They'll selling be like, a, who's the comedian? Tag we're gonna, the comedian. I'm going to see Voss and Norton going like this. Yeah. <laughs> a, 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 of Keith doing stand up with one arm. Um, that's terrible. But that's amazing that you could, like, it's just funny to me. Mm. Instagram is hilarious. Instagram is crazy. I mean, Twitter is still a fucking shit. I don't do Twitter at all anymore. I, I haven't done Facebook in like five years. I love Facebook. I can't. I couldn't. I, I love Facebook because it's old people shit. Right. It's just people getting into arguments with each it's other. A, no, it's a guy fishing where, where he's not supposed to. Oh. Uh, it's yeah, it's some Karen or it's a friend of mine. I don't even know if it's videos or I don't even. They know. have a video option, but you can also go to Marketplace. They have a Craigslist Marketplace oh, right. where you can buy. I mean, I've bought such stupid shit, and I don't even buy it. I just there's a button when you go to Marketplace. It's like Craigslist, but you can hit local, so stuff all around you. Oh. And then all you have to do is you hit a button. Is this still available? Uh -huh. it, it's like the automatic auto response. Click it, and it just sends somebody a thing. Is this still available? I don't want it. I just right. want them to talk right, back to right, me. Right, right, right. And I'm just, I have like 7,000, is this still available? So that's all I do. And people go, do you still? And then like a week later, are you still interested? They yeah. Have, they have a, are you still interested button. Right. <laughs> and I They're never not buy. checking every day. No, I never bought it. How about those people that are like uh, in your comment, or in your, uh, they DM you, hey, hello, beautiful. I don't You're always like, <laughs> I've never what gotten country are you translating this from? It's always like, hello, darling. Costa Rica. <laughs> it's like, I love beautiful. You have to put an accent with it, body, I, And it'll make sense. I can't. Ready? If you do it with a Jersey accent, hello, beautiful. It doesn't hello, sound good. Hello, beautiful. Now do it with this. Hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. How about this? Hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. Yeah, it's all beautiful. It's crazy. The conspiracy thing, though, um... I heard one that's freaking me out about Jamie Foxx. Oh yeah, no, I've believe I've. Have you looked into it? I mean, I've called the hospital. Sure, yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy. This is why the conspiracy. But he's a clone, right? Is that the one you're talking about? No, that P Diddy poisoned him. Oh, okay. Have you seen I don't that know one? that one. I know the one that he took a took a vaccine. And it paralyzed him, and I know the one where they actually killed him and they made a clone of him. 
but I don't know this one. Well, I know that he the hair weave, he had a hair weave. That's why he has the tattoo on the back of his neck from the scar, covering up the oh. scar from back in the day before they did good space wigs, okay. like the one Dan Soda has. What? Oh, shit. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> you didn't know that? No. Oh, okay. Um, your husband, not, uh, yeah, husband's going to get one soon, too, uh, by the way. He's not. 100%. No, listen, I don't. Th- I think older men with full heads of hair look, they, they, it, it doesn't help them. It doesn't make them look masculine. What does it make them look? Feminine. Really? I think older men with a lot of hair look very feminine to me. You should, have, you should be losing some hair. Well, good. Thank you. You should be at least receding. Yeah. Or maybe a patch in the back. Like a Tom Papa? It gives you a little, gives you a little, yeah, a perfect example when I say it gives you a little masculinity. Tom so t- uh, Colin Quinn? Colin Quinn. Colin Quinn. People think he's sexy. Yeah. You don't like that? Ta- George Clooney? Look at this guy. You don't like that? No. Oh, that guy is good. That he's good because he's, he's. George Clooney. Look at George Clooney. Oh, I mean, you don't like I that. bet he looks he looks nice there because somebody's done him up. But I bet you in the morning when you go and look at him, plus he has a beard. But yeah, what about Brad Pitt? Look at Brad Pitt. Hey, listen, you're allowed to believe whatever you want to believe, man. I'm just telling you what I think. I'm just proving your theory wrong. I think thinning hair is he, and he's got a little bit of a receding hairline there. Yeah, and he's probably got a space wig. There's no way, Brad Pitt. Look Brad at Brad Pitt's receding. Mm. But he had a good. Also get, like he's got too much hair. He should. He should. It starts to look feminine because yeah. he doesn't have a beard. Maybe you're right. Now that I'm looking at him, he kind of looks like a hot older woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brad Pitt looks like my aunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. P Diddy, um, supposedly, Jamie Fox. But then there's another thing that he was poisoned on set. Oh. The, because have you seen Jamie Foxx? No. Have you? I mean, look, if someone has a stroke, they're in right. a coma. Right. We, we would see video or pictures. Right. Or something. Right. That's Jamie Foxx. Right. He right. was in the public. He loved being in the public. So if he had a stroke. Right. Even if he could go, no, 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 he would say something. Right. He'd, there would be some He'd hold video. up some signs. He'd, something. Right. Jeremy Renner got run over right. by a fucking. This is going to bring that up. Right? Mm-hmm. And he was on that afternoon going, I'll be back. Right. Right? And he's back. Yeah. Jamie Foxx had a stroke. Yeah. We, have a, we, we don't even know what's going on. Nothing. No. What, what, something's up. Well, maybe he's really, maybe he's in a coma. Maybe he's really bad. You, you think he's in a coma like Steven Seagal? What, Steven you, Seagal's in a coma? In the movie he was. Oh. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> for like 10 years? <laughs> How long can you be in a coma for? I don't think people can... have been in a coma for probably, look it up. It's like, pro- I bet you like the longest coma is like 40 years. Yeah, but you can't be in a coma on a respirator. A respirator, you get infections. You'll be dead. I'm dead. That, those Take re- a look. That's why people were dying. The respirator gets in there and infects your shit. Oh. And you're, you're done. Oh, well, I, I think people have been. In- <laughs> I think there was a girl that was in a coma just recently that came out of a coma after like 12 or 15 years. My audience is in a coma right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 19-year coma. Holy 19 shit. 27-year coma. Wakes up after 27 years in a coma. Fuck That's it. a hello romantic comedy. But <laughs> 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 That was a comedy. Who was that? Was that know. Was that what was while uh, you were sleepy? With Sandra the, Bullock. Sandra when, Bullock. That yeah, was she basically movie. sexually assaulted some guy. No movie made <laughs> from twenty years ago past would ever make it today. No, <laughs> it's like no. Even yeah, while there's you were like sleeping, full rape going on, and then women marrying that man and yeah, stuff. Yeah, first of all, that should have been Cosby's movie. <laughs> yeah, while you were sleeping. <laughs> yeah, he was out. Yeah, that was a good movie. It was a good rom com, right? Remember him? Uh, I have my eyebrows are too thick, dude. <laughs> I have too much fucking facial hair. Who is it? Dylan McDermott or something? Uh, what's his name? It says it right there. What's his name? Uh, stars. Oh, Bill Pullman. Bill Pullman. Yeah. Peter Gallagher. Is it Peter Gallagher? Yeah. Yeah, it's Peter. P- Bill, Bill Pullman, Pullman died. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, it's 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 fucking weird to me that. <laughs> The shit that was acceptable, like the movie, 
like you can't make a movie anymore. What? You can't make a Tropic Thunder. You can't oh, make Tropic a Thunder was such a good movie. American Pie. Yeah, American Pie is a little. It was funny. Super bad. Can't make Super Bad. Right. Right. You can't make any of this shit anymore. What can we get? Or do you think it's going to come back? Because you, listen, you're a director. You're a writer. Thank you. You 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 you're making stuff happen, right? And you know what they want. You know what people are looking for. Do you well, think people do say too much wokeness? Like, but the pro- but the thing is, is that. The, we're still dealing with people who are, are our age or older in these key positions, right? So they're still looking at things f- through a certain lens, you know? So they don't like, they don't want, it's still predominantly white men choosing, let's say. So they don't like a certain kind of comedy or they don't, they want it to be the way that they liked it when they were. Can I ask but you when cre- those people get out and the newer people come in, you'll see different kinds of movies. I have to be honest with you. That. Yeah. I, I, I've, anything I've ever went to mm-hmm. was mostly women and gay men. What do you mean? Like pitching stuff. Or oh, going, in those offices? In those offices, it's mostly women. But they're selling it to their boss. And the, you're saying that guy is the not rich, always, but yeah, a lot of times. Or it's a you know somebody who the guy, got I there by liking the same things as a. I, I mean, I don't see. I, I heard Billy's movies coming out is pretty edgy right. that he made with Bobby Cannavale, where it's yeah. Like, I fuck. think you're going to see some edgy movies coming out, but yeah. then I think it's going to spin a little bit again because the people, so? yes, because the people who are coming into those positions of power are not. Gen X, they're going to be millennials and Gen Zs. I hate. I mean, I think Gen. I think we grew up in the best time. Yeah. I think we had the funnest. Yeah. No, run. we're we're really really lucky. We're. I feel like we're blessed because we got to have a life without phones for a long time. I mean, crazy. Yeah, we got to have childhoods that nobody gave a shit where we were. Parents didn't care. It was like so freeing. We didn't even realize how free. Like we complained about it, like mm, we're latchkey kids, but it was actually such a gift, you know. I. I like Max got on his bike the other day and he came home and he put on all this gear and then he grabbed a Nerf gun, put a, a mask on and it was like, I'm like, where are you going? He goes, going on the neighborhood to protect the neighborhood. That's so funny. And in my, I was a little nervous. I'm like, I don't want somebody to get, maybe one of the neighbors see him or, and then what if, some, and I was like, fuck it, just go. Right. Go. And then he fell. Right. And he called me on his phone. I'm like, oh, Fuck. Right, like fuck. Don't you remember like bandaging your friend and being like, "Fucking suck it up." I, I remember my fr- my sister broke her hand, and I was like, "Don't ruin our day," you know. <laughs> <laughs> she did end up going to the hospital, but she fucking sucked it up for a long time. I remember me and my friend Chris were at the park, and there was a like a little stream in the middle of the park that went to a sore, an open sore, a sewer, sewer, right? Sewer. A, a sore is something from you Boston. get that's. Sewer. An open wound. Sewer? Yeah. Well, how do you say it? Sewer. Sewer. Yeah, but if I say it like that, I sound like an asshole. Sewer. <laughs> right? I'm from, my stupid accent fucks things up. Yeah. Sewer. Right? <laughs> Doesn't it sound a little better that way? Sewer. Right? Yeah. I sound like an old Jew when I... Sewer. sewer. <laughs> it's a sewer. But there was a stream with the sewer. But a pop. sore is... A, I know, but in the Boston okay. accent, uh, you have to yeah. give me some slack. All right. Yeah. So, you also say draw. Draw. Yeah, instead yeah. of drawer. It was a draw. Yeah. You mean the draw you pull out or yeah. the draw? <laughs> no, you say the I the say same draw way. for that. But you say draw and draw. You yeah, say the I same also way. say Rich barrel. I call a trash can a barrel. Oh, okay. That's odd. It's a barrel. I've never heard that. Yeah, we call it a barrel. And we call soda soda. Oh. And a sandwich is a sub. Right. Yeah, we don't fuck around with that hoagie shit. Right, no. Do you say hoagie? No, I what? say hero. I, what? <laughs> Just kidding. We say sub. <laughs> I hate Canadians it. say sub. What's a hero? I don't know. How do we get hero? I don't know. Out of bread. I mean, if you can eat the whole thing, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> You're a hero. Now you I didn't even know. Now that I have half a stomach, it is. Yeah. I dumped today at the cellar. I had a half a piece of sandwich. I ate too fast. I was no, the... you threw up. Yeah, because if I ate too fast. Yeah, it sucks. Oh. But anyways, my point is... I was there more about that. They had a stream. I'll talk about it. I had a stream in the middle of the park. It started raining out, like torrential. Me and my friend were in the stream lying as this water was filling yes, up, right. pushing us down the stream. 
into a sewer. Right, yes. That went <laughs> underground, and we don't know where it went. And we were getting sucked into it. And we would get, and nobody was there. Right. Nobody was telling us stop. And I'm sure nobody ever found out. Like, you didn't ever tell your parents. No. Like, there was no consequences for that whatsoever. No, we had a blast. But it was probably one of the most dangerous things I've ever done in my life. Right. Because if it, if it got any rougher, we were just gone. Right. Gone. In a sewer. Right, but you're supposed to do stuff like that when you're kids. And we just... You know there's, like, these places where you can send your kid where they let your kid, like... Use a saw or a hammer, like stuff that's dangerous. I do that. What? I let Max. Use- no, but there's places where, like, like it's like the opposite of daycare, where you can send your kid to do dangerous stuff. Just play with a drill without yes. anybody. What yes. the fuck? <laughs> it's true, because that's how fucked up we are. We're so like, you can send him down this hookers. <laughs> yes. Fucking HPV. Yes. <laughs> because there's I- pedophiles in the, the park. There's a little yes. area just yes. a bench. Hey, kid, come over here. <laughs> And they could go over and just be molested yeah. if they fuck up. I mean, I didn't think the fire <laughs> festival funny, was that bad for kids. You, you know? know how funny that like, skit would be <laughs> if you had a right. If you had a Gen X park, uh, yeah. like school, right? We're right. gonna teach you to, to kid, toughen them up a little. Toughen them up. Well, because you don't want to get you don't want to get your pecka sucked by a middle aged white man. Say no. Yeah, you got to figure out how to like yeah. you know. Kid, don't take the candy. Yeah. Well. It's funny because I saw this video where they were setting kids up. They would tell kids about ways that they could get molested, right? Yeah. And then they would do the thing like an hour later. So one of the things was like they were saying like, you know, an ice cream truck will come by and they'll try to get you in the back and don't ever do it. And then they'd send an ice cream truck and the guy would be like, hey, guys, I'm closing up. If you, anybody wants an ice cream, come in the back and get it. And they all went. <laughs> <laughs> like this was like an hour later. You know. First of all, they, I guarantee they all were like, ah, I'll suck his dick for an ice yeah, cream. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, that's I, I was telling Raina this when she was like nine. She goes, wait, wait, did they all get real ice cream? It's like you're <laughs> missing the point of this story. Well, I mean, ice cream is ice cream. <laughs> ice cream's worth it's a like mole- there's oh. nothing you can kids can't be taught you, they have to experience molestation it's like the hot stove <laughs> thing you know you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, just you gotta get you gotta get diddled kids yeah, yeah. sorry you know, <laughs> public you service announcement for me and bonnie your kids gotta get yeah, diddled sorry, it's gonna happen have a rainbow go over right now yeah <laughs> Woo. Uh, yeah, what was this lady? Because there's a lady on, I love her on Instagram or TikTok. I I don't know where these, because everything goes into everything now. They have the, um, the, the millennial or whatever the fuck it is going, uh, why did, why are we giving Gen X a pass? Right. And then she's like, well, because of this. Because we'll fucking beat the shit out of you. But she goes, one of them was like, why do you drink from a hose? There's a sink inside. And she, she cuts it. Because we weren't allowed in the fucking house. Right. Today's episode is brought to you by Ghostbed. A great night's sleep is important to anybody, not just comedians. Ghostbed makes premium mattresses at an affordable price. All designed for cooler and more comfortable sleep. Take advantage of a free and fast shipping, their 101 night mattress trial, and financing starting at just 35 bucks a month. You heard me. You can get a brand new mattress for as low as 35 bucks a month. Listeners get 40% off all products site wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories, or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code YKW. At ghostbed.com slash YKWD for 40% off site wide, limited time only. I remember, I have a distinct memory, first or second grade, coming home, my mother handing me a spoon and saying, Go play. (laughs) (laughs) And I I remember going into the side of the house, had little bushes, and I remember digging in the dirt. And getting sticks and making a fort, like a little tiny. Yeah. And I, I remember eating the dirt, going, oh, that's gross, because yeah. it looked like chocolate at one point. Mm-hmm. And I remember for hours, until the sun went down, and she went, Bobby! And I went in, and my I was fucking filthy. I washed my hands, I brushed my teeth. Ate your dinner. Ate my dinner. Not as much as normal, because you did have the dirt, but <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that, I mean, I remember having, I mean, it, it wasn't like a sad moment. It was like a. 
No, it was Fun like night. insane. It, you would sp- you the minute we were done our chores, we were allowed. We didn't have to come back until it was dark out. And in Canada, it wouldn't get dark sometimes until like eleven fifteen or something. Yeah, it's fucking weird. We would just be out like That's the weird. whole fucking time. And you grew up on a farm. Yeah, and then we would just be eating. Sometimes we'd eat stuff out of the garden. We'd be like Ugh. getting carrots and shaking the dirt off of it, eating. That's great. Riding that, a horse, whatever. That's why I'm, I love, because we're going up to the tiny house Sunday mm-hmm. for two months. Wow. And Max starts wilderness camp uh, the first week. Okay. So he's in wilderness camp, which is they go hiking, canoeing, overnight. Right. And then at night he comes back to the house and we go fishing. Wait, he goes all uh, every day, but not overnight? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, not overnight. He comes oh. home at around, uh, I think, 3 or 4 o'clock. Mm-hmm. We go pick him up. But then we go and hike and do shit until mm-hmm. the sun goes down. But we're in the woods every day, all day. And, the, and then at night we'll go in and watch a little TV or some shit right. at night before we go to bed. Right. And then we, hop, we have a little tiny house. Go up to our thing. I wake up every morning. Go for my little stupid walks with the dog on the country road. I love it. Yeah, it's heaven. I love it. Like, we were playing the Mega Bucks the other day, and I was like, I almost don't want to, I don't want to win. <laughs> oh my God. Because if I win, I'm, I'm out. I'm going up there. Right. I'm out. Right. You'll right. never, right. you guys won't see, I'll never see my friends again. Right. Unless you come to me. Right. Because I love it. I can't wait for next Sunday to be in the tiny house. Right. Just to be in the fucking woods. I leave my phone in the house. Yeah, because you're. Ex- this is. I'm gonna get too weird, but you're. Ex- you're experiencing the moment, which is so hard to do. Like even here in New York, like when I was walking around, uh, you know, I did uh, Bennington earlier, and, and then before your show, and it's like, I, I went into the park, and it's like, it, it's like nobody's t- ever touching nature. I mean, that's all they have is this little tiny patch of grass. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like. It's wild that it's just too much all the time coming at you. It's it's like when you're in nature. It's so so. I sound so gay, but yeah, you like sound, you sound cool. if you're in nature, you then you're like just, you're living just, in the moment. You know, you really are. It's like it feels good. It's like important to your soul. I, I'm telling you right now, being in New Hampshire for those two months is saves my life. Yeah, because I'm not thinking about fame. Right. I'm not thinking about likes. Right. I'm not. I'm still doing my podcast. I'm still doing the thing. Right. I'm you con- still have your passion. I still do my thing, and I have fun doing. I love talking. I love. I love doing this shit. Mm-hmm. But when I'm up there, and I'm in, the, I love being in the woods. There's something scary at night because you know the trees are there, and I'm terrified of the darkness. But it there's something about being maybe not a great match for you. What's but- that? <laughs> I like it though. It overcomes my shit. Right. The quietness overcomes my anxiety. Right. The uh, the physical stuff that you you're doing that you don't even know you're doing. Right. It gets all that bullshit out. Right. And I don't care about anything. I don't care about shows. I don't care about selling tickets. Right. Give a fuck. That's how you're supposed to feel, though. I know. That's why you got, because people didn't get this much information before. This was like all new to be like. It's like yeah. you shouldn't have that many. You should like. Talk to a friend who's like, you should really just have the same views as your friends. That's how it used to be. Like, yeah. you just were like, your all your neighbors had the same views on things. You didn't get like a thousand different. Yeah, now everybody's gonna pluck their views on their lawn. <laughs> yeah, and you go down. That guy's a douche. She's cool. Yeah. Fuck them. You just didn't think about things that much. I guess you know? not at all. Okay. Not at all. Yeah, because I I think in the eighties too. I remember thinking like it was all figured out. Like, what do you mean? like a feminism and like we weren't feminists because we were kind of like well that already happened i gotta did i i think i talked about this before did i talk about the feminism how feminism this is a good one okay. good conspiracy okay we talked about this before what about how i think we've talked about the different waves of feminism before there's a video with a guy who was friends with the rockefeller and the guy Rockefeller was like oh invented feminism. invented fez do you see that one i think so it, that's a good me. one that's Please a, remind me. They invented fem, feminism because they needed to tax. They weren't taxing half the country. Right, <laughs> right. Because women were all home taking care of the right. families. They're like, how are we going to get women to want to work? We need women to want to work so we can make more money, so they'll spend right. more money. Right. We can tax more people right. and the government, and we can break up the family unit 
and we can control the kids more. Kids went to school earlier. Kids didn't go to school as early as they did. Right. They wanted them to go to school earlier to fucking control them. Right. They want kids in school from the second they start thinking <laughs> to teach them the shit they want to teach them, to keep them away from their parents, make both parents work so they don't have time for the kids. Right. So the kids will go to us for their fucking thoughts. Right. And look at what happened. Well, it is true because when I was, um, you know, w w living in the condo complex with Rich, Raina was younger, and Rich would be on the road a lot, and I stayed at home with Raina and, you know, talked to a lot of the moms all the time. And so there's some stay-at-home dads, too. Any kid that had at least one parent sort of all the time, whether the parent was a good parent or not a good parent, the kid was always way more like socially acceptable. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like they were just able to sort of understand different social dynamics, even if the parents were kind of wacky. Yeah. But the kids that went into, they'd go into early care, or daycare early in the morning, the parents would drop them off. Then they'd go to school. Then they'd go to aftercare. Then they'd come home. And those kids are always like a little like. Little fucking loopy. Yes. They think, yes, because they don't have that one yeah. thing, I guess. To they weren't taught how to be a person, or how to be a right. They're when just you taught how to be a, a member of society. I took Max down here on a Saturday night, and we were hanging. He's making me laugh. Yes, right. Like right. we're hanging at the table, and he we're he's crack. We're cracking up together. Right. I mean, eating. Your friends. We're sharing. He's like, Dad, let me get one of those. We're like pals. Yes, yes. And then we went home. We watched TV together. It's like he, he, I, he, when he shakes somebody's hand, five and two, he knows. <laughs> Shake the hand, look in the eyes. And then wow. you go, what's your name? If you don't know right. him, what's your name? Right. And it was just wild to see him up front with the door guys. Hey, what's your name? Yeah, right. I'm Max. Nice right. to meet you. Right. And they're like, dude, your kid's awesome. Yeah, because he had a mom. That right. was home. Right. And I would go home. Any, or a dad much, that talked to him. I mean, I yeah. think parents don't talk like those kids that are getting, you know, they come home, the only, you know, by the time they get home, the parents are frazzled. They've been at work all day. They're saying, get in the bath, get your, brush your teeth. You know, it's just yelling. Go to bed. Yes. They don't get that like yeah. actual, you know, kind of friend interaction. Fucking weird. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so happy we brought up my weight thing. My surgery that I got. You said you wanted to talk about. Yes. That. Yeah. Um, it's a year. Just the throwing up. Well, it's a year. What happens was I got the, for context, people who know my podcast, I got the gastric sleeve. It's called the sleeve. Right. It's really, they just make your stomach smaller. It's a year ago, a month. June, June 27th is when I got it. Right. And um, it's kind of weird for me right now. Wait, it's June 27th today. Is it? I think it's a, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Today is my anniversary. Yeah. Oh, happy anniversary. My stomach, my new stomach. Yeah. And my old stomach's in a when garbage you're old pail. today. <laughs> my, new, my old stomach's some Guatemalan's wallet right now. I'd love to give your new stomach a cupcake, but I know you're not allowed. <laughs> no, I can't eat. I can eat. Well, the thing is, today, it's so funny that I dumped today on my anniversary. Um, my stomach is so small. If I eat too fast or too much, I get sick. But are you like hungry the way you used to be? Like, like no. you know, if you sit, sit down and eat like turkey and mashed potatoes, let's say, and you're like, mm, my, I could eat that whole plate full. My addictive shit is. Yes. So I, I have an addictive personality. Right. Some people, and I don't know if you can, I know you understand it, but like Dawn understands it because she's lived with me. I've been sober for so long. But she doesn't really get it. Right. It's like, just stop. <laughs> it's like, you understand? I understand. And if I, we get in a fight, you're like, all right, I was, I, it's my fault. Right. She'll get, you're right. But in her heart of hearts, she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, I know it. Right. I know. Right. I don't know if you feel the same way with Rich, but. I just, yeah, I just think you're in charge of your brain. I understand that. I understand it. It makes sense, but it's just not the way it is with some right. people. Right, right, right. We have to give it over to our higher power. Right. <laughs> Which sounds nuts. Right. Nuts. I get it. It's just, it has to be done that way. But <laughs> it sounds crazy when you say it out loud. But my, so when I got the food today, I'm eating with a friend. Like, let's eat. I was like, okay. So I ordered this, that, and this. Over-ordered. Mm -hmm. Over-ordered like I used to. 
all good food, salmon, right. hummus, right. bread, and they ordered, and I, you know, I started eating. And I ate too much. There was too much in front of me. I have, like, I, when I eat, I have to eat, like, get, just get the salmon and eat right. the salmon. Right. And then if I can get something else, if I'm, you know, I could do it. If not, that's it. Well, that's the thing that you are a grown human. 52. Living amongst food everywhere. There's no scarcity. Habits. There's zero scarcity. Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing is like you don't have to over order. You could like eat something. And then if you're still hungry an hour later, it's easy to get another habit. Bit of food. It's shitty habits. Right. It's when I go with my wife. Right. We get the appetizer. You get an appetizer. I'll get an appetizer. We share the appetizer. We'll get a salad. Right. Then we'll get a main course with right. the sides. Right. And then we get dessert with two cappuccinos. Right. That's going out to dinner. When now, I go, Dawn, I have to say it. Before. Can you please split something with me? Right. And how does she feel Because I feel that? I feel guilty. Yeah, right. For the waitress. Oh, yeah, we're just gonna, and because I know I was aware. Oh, these, guilty for the waitress. The tip is lower. I they, know. I just know. Tip a little more. It's it's my fat guilt. Right. It's weird. my fatso inside that's never gonna leave, and I have to. Like you have to, you can't just have water. You gotta like order. Fuck food. food. Like I have to go fuck food. Right. When my wife goes, "Where do you want to go for dinner?" I go, "I fuck it. I have to go. I don't care. I'll go wherever you guys want to go." I don't care. But you still enjoy it, right? I do enjoy it, but I have to be careful. because, And I leave food, too. I feel guilty. My mother. Right. Take it with you. Eat right. it tomorrow. Right. I don't want to eat it tomorrow. Right. I'm a fat fuck because of eat it tomorrow. Right. Rich has I'll the same it. thing with oh, free he's, food. He's he can't one. not take free food. You're yeah. like, it, it, order healthy food to the club. If you want, you know, like if they don't have salads and stuff, but he won't, he'll only order what's on the menu at a club because it's free for him. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's, but you don't have to eat a deep fried turkey burger, you know, you can order, you can, they'll bring you food from miles away. Boss is a, is a fucking, I don't know if he's human. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't understand your husband. Right. No, I don't either. I've toured with him. Yeah. He has a, uh, a Lexus. Yeah. He's got a house. Yeah. He's got a lot of money stored up. Hopefully. It's in the wall downstairs, $5,000. Oh, my God. Sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> That's all? Did I just say that? Well, it's there. That's all I know about that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, he takes food like he's homeless. Right, it's scare. It's a scarcity mindset. He can't. That's. We'll get back to the room. You said, "Why is his room like that?" It's like, if you were born poor, it calls to you every minute of your life. Yeah. It's the worst addiction because it's always like, "Come on, man." He'll it's tell like, me I'm in the shit. This shit club. There's 20 people here, but the salmon's awesome. Yeah. I'm like, are you working club because of salmon? He brings home so much free food. Yeah. No, he would though. He would. It's like a bizarre. I don't get it. It's like you have money, you can say no, dude. Their lobster bisque he, is for. It's amazing. Because he get his dopamine comes when he saves money or when he's getting something free. He gets a dopamine hit. What is that? It's, I don't know. It's white trash, man. That's how he grew up. He can't fucking help it. I, I, it's like you look around at his life. It's constantly. It's like the tattoos, the rings. Everything about him is white trash being like, come home, baby. Come home. <laughs> it's like always in his ear. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's a very strong pull. that he I has. love Rich Voss. One of my favorite people. Yeah. I love talking to him. I've he's made me laugh like nobody's right, made me laugh. Right. And I'm dude, me and him have laughed on the phone at two in the morning, coming back from a shit gig. I mean cracking up almost we have to pull the car over right. for the outrageous shit that we talk about. Yes. But he on the on the right other side of that, there's nobody has made me more angry than your fucking husband. I mean it's you can't he would, get through to him. He took salmon off a craft service table. Yeah. Oh no, he's shameless. Who takes salmon? Who takes like not salmon? We went. Uh, saw, uh, we, went we went to some tapings the other night. Some, you know, there was a 
comedy people they're, they're they're taping some specials at this club in new jersey oh, i can't remember the name of the club but we went there and i was like because my friend micah did one micah fox yeah so funny, funny. Very funny and um so i wanted to go to see micah and rich was like i'm coming and i didn't know why he was coming it seemed weird but then i realized like the minute we got there he was like ordering food <sighs> It was he came with me to the taping because cause he knew he could get a free meal. <laughs> it's fucking. He has money. I know. He has Rolexes. I know. He's I got know. diamond rings. Well, Alexis, his wife. Do you understand? If Dawn made your money, <laughs> I would stay home. I wouldn't. I work. tell him to stay home. Bonnie, if Dawn made what you make, I would be home with Raina. All the time. <laughs> You'd come home. The house would be perfect. No. I no, swear no. to God, I I look at I love Dawn. She made a choice. I asked her, you want to stay home? I want to stay home. Great. I'll go work. But if Dawn made a f- half of what you I'm make, still the stay at home parent. What do you mean? See? I stay at oh, home. Oh, he's gotta go get fucking uh He goes on the road every week. Chuckle fucks. Yes, he's like <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I want to get my buffalo chicken panini. At, I know at side splitters. I've been to clubs where they've made me meals to take home to Rich. What? I swear to God, they they they've gotten a call or something, and they're like, "Here's that, you know, seafood medley that Rich asked." I'm sorry, I have. To. Yeah, call him up. Hello? Um, I'm deleting your number from my phone. Don't ever call me again. We're not friends. Bye. Love you. Why? What happened? I don't like you anymore. <laughs> I'm done with him. I'm dumb. I'm done. I'm done. I gotta, I'm not going to be friends with him anymore. Why? Because of that? We have to teach him. Oh, we have to teach him. No, it's too late. You have to accept him. You just have to like, you know what? I swear to God, this is so crazy, but I had to be like, I love him anyway. Like, I had to release some of the shit that he does. Foss. See, good, good things happen to good people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're back in my phone. <laughs> this is why, this is why your husband, he's one of, I've never been more aggravated by a human being, and I've never, there's never been. He's I will I will be like, yeah. he'll be on the road, and I'll be like, like almost tearing up how much I love him. Honest to God. Really? Like, Yes, like because there's something about him that, like we said before, about the like, you know, the, the three legged dog or whatever. Yes, but, like yes. <laughs> but yeah. like I'll be, and then within two minutes of him being home, I'll be like slamming my door closed, like I don't want to talk to him anymore. Yeah, I I understand it. Yeah, I understand it. I I I've been with Voss where I'm like, oh, this is so awesome, and then all of a sudden I'm like, fuck <laughs> him. I make bad choices. <laughs> I say the same thing about myself. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking. Well, you listen. We're what? talking about your food addiction. What about it? Okay. You, did you go to the comedy show the other night? The specials just to get the free dinner. No. Be honest. Listen, be honest. Listen, Bonnie. I went. I went so they could see a fucking celebrity. That's why I went. Oh, you you were touching them with your presence. The fr- the free dinner was a bonus. That's all. Here's how you know. I'll tell you how you know if it was how, what 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 did you have? I had a chicken sandwich, and they had crab cake. They had pasta. Uh, 100%, had a hundred percent, hundred percent. He went there for the. <laughs> no, he knows every. He knows the whole fucking menu. <laughs> He looked at the menu listen, before he went. No, he doesn't even know no, how to do I, that. First of all, I've worked there before. I've worked as there. a waiter. That's how he knew. That's how he knew. No, yeah. no I, I've done shows there. Stupid. What club? It's called. Uh, oh, it's in Garfield. It's called. Uh, uh, it's slipping my mind. I'll think of it. Oh, when Jesus. Why would I ask a sixty-five-year-old? Crossroads. Crossroads. Cross. Yes, and that's what we're making right now. Crossroads. All right, I'll or see you later. Roads. I think Bye. you meant inroads. <laughs> Bye. Hey, wait, hold on. I what? hear another girl in there. That's not. That's Max, my producer. <laughs> oh God, he sounds like a skirt. <laughs> he sounds like a skirt. What are you? Fuck. What are you? Mickey Rourke and fucking Harley <laughs> Davidson and the Marlboro Man. 
<laughs> it was so funny the other night. Bobby called the club I was working at, and the club was called the Grand. And Bobby goes, "You're working at a place on how much you're making." <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. It uh, was so funny. I, I, I'll call him, and he'll pick up the phone while he's on stage a lot. He always does. He'll call me. I don't know that he's – I, for some reason, never think about it. And then I'll just be, like, laying in bed or who knows what and just answer, and then it's like, Barney, these people in the front row or, you know, whatever. And it's like, oh, now i got to make this uh, funny. Yeah, he's looking He's looking to fucking uh, – he's looking for Kills 15 time. minutes. Kills time, yeah. Yeah. Because his salmon's not done yet. Right. Yeah. Whoa. All right, goodbye. Running out of material on the podcast, I see. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me go. <laughs> you guys stink. <laughs> he's out of his mind. He's one of the funniest people. He's really funny. On earth. I mean, he's really, really funny. What do you got going on besides you had a movie you made last year? Because, like, like, he tells me things, but very sick, dude. I can't say anything. Well, I got some things going on, but I, now I'm I'm in a holding pattern because of the strike. Dude, okay, but but I did um, sell the rights to the book that I wrote, and so they're what's making, the, what's the the book is called? You're better than me, right? And um, it's about my childhood in Canada, best friends with a cow, and uh, no, I really had a cow, but. Um, <laughs> That book is pretty funny, but but anyway, they're doing just the the high school years for the series. You, so you're you're doing a series, is it? So the series I've already, I've already written the pilot, but now we have to like write the rest of the series. Really? Yeah, but we have to wait for what? You know, the strike to be over. So you you're gonna you're gonna have a show with what with FX or somebody? Can you say it's hey? Canada? It's uh, so it's called- gonna be in Canada. It's going to be shot in Canada. It's made in Canada. They may sell it at some point to a, you know, American streamer. I'm sure that they want to. But you make less money with Canada. I do, I do. That sucked. Yeah. You mean, I do. I thought I you. Were, I thought you were going to say something. Really. I do. Nobody in America wanted it. I didn't. Say, I didn't even have a Canadian company came to me and said we want to like do this. Right. So it wasn't like I was out pitching it. Right. I it was just, just out of the blue. Yeah, they just uh, read the book. They were looking for material. I don't know. And then, um, yeah, they offered me a deal. <sighs> you can't, you asked me, remember you were going to write something for me once? I would love to. Yeah? Yes, and I've talked to you about it many times. I think you're a fantastic actor. I but, think you should have your own show or movie. Uh, do, do you, does it have to be funny? Um, I, th- I think it would probably benefit you for it to be funny. It would be an easier way for you to sell it. But, like, if you wrote it, would you have to write funny or can you write dramatic? Well, it depends what the show would be about because... Um, no, I'm talking like a movie. A movie? Yeah. Yeah, no, it wouldn't... I mean, I think that it would be funny regardless. Right. Because it's you and it's your life and that's how you're... I mean, would it would it have to be like you, hilarious Judd Apatow style? No, but could, but do you know what's weird about my life? The first half of it, up until I think f- maybe a little bit in the beginning, but most of my life until I got sober and out of rehab was a hundred percent not funny. Yeah, you None never of, laughed. I laughed, but not. Not like I did when I got sober. Well, what when made I started, you want to become a comedian? When I started to go to AA meetings, I hung out with these cool kids. We were young kids in AA. And How we, old were you at the time? 16 and a half. When you started I quit when getting I was, sober? I was quit when I was 15. I went to jail for a few months. Wow. And, and then I went to uh, rehab for 14 months. Wow. So when I got out of there, I started going to meetings around Melrose, Mass, and, and where I lived. And I met a kid, Mark Caesar who became my best friend and another kid, Jamie Giorgio, who became best friends. We're still friends to this day. Uh, I love those guys, but we and were sober. They were all, yeah, we're all sober. Like he went to Berkeley. He had long hair. He was in a band. Wow. So we used to, ha- the other kid was kind of Italian. We used to hang out and go to AA dances. And all we did was fucking bust each other's balls and have fun with each other, make each other laugh. Right. So I would start, I, we would all get to these dances or go to, I hop after to hang out and be sober, you know, and we would tell stories. And I started 
like there was a long time, two years almost, where I didn't meet any girls. And I had to relearn how to hook up. Right. Because there was drunk sober. street kid right. punk hooking up. And now I'm sober. And I had to learn like I like I first when I first started meeting girls in high school, I would just be like, Yeah, I'm sober. I believe in God, the third step. And they'd be like, What? Right. Like I had a Mark had to teach me how to right. shut the fuck up. Right. Let them talk. Right. You know, listen. Girls love you know, he taught me how to get laid again. Right. And hook up and meet girls. Right. And we would go to AA dances. He's like, just here's here's how I uh, you, you, no, I don't know. Say it. I was going to say something about you sucking his cock, but. Yeah, no, I blew him. Yeah. No, <laughs> you should have said it. <laughs> no, I don't know why it was like so hard to come out. Um, it was a timing thing, not a content thing. I <laughs> care. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I learned how to do all that shit again. That's, that's when a my good li- movie. That's when my life became funny. Right. But before that, I don't remember laughing. Wow. I don't I don't remember having but fun. I think I've started to realize that like being a comedian, that's just another way to get a dopamine hit too. It's like the same thing as addiction because you love so much being around other comedians. Why? Because they make you laugh and it's it's such a laughter is such a drug. People don't even realize. It's like when you go to a comedy club and everybody's laughing, that's the drug. Being in that audience is what the drug is. It's like you think it's like, yeah. oh, this comedian is so hilarious or whatever, but it's really like being with other people laughing at the same thing, whether you kind of agree with it or not. It's just like, that's the drug, you know? Yeah, sometimes, I don't I, this is a weird thing to admit, but sometimes I'm like, dude, you're not a comic, you're just an addict. And you mm-hmm. learned how to do comedy to get a fix. Yes, yes. Without getting back without having to give up your sobriety date right like right. whatever you wanted and nobody would really get mad yeah, you know nobody it's like obviously you couldn't say that you know to other people in college or you couldn't say that at work or you couldn't say that to your parents or whatever but then all of a sudden you're with these people where you could say the worst fucking shit and you didn't have best. to have that fear in the back of your head of like oh i'm gonna get in trouble it's such a good feeling it's such a great feeling but people don't understand the shit we say to each other right is horrific well because it's so funny you know there's this clip of natalie cuomo on a morning show where she does one of her jokes and uh it's so funny because it's so indicative of like comics hanging out with it. it's such a mild mild joke in comedy terms they say are you uh who's the cuomo guy they say are you are mario you? cuomo andrew yeah. andrew cuomo yeah it's, they're like are you related and she goes uh she goes, no, but my uncle did molest some people, so I guess we have that in common. <laughs> and um, it was, like, right around the time he was having problems or whatever. And the woman was like, ah, you know what I mean? And it's just so funny. Natalie just says it like there's not going to be any problem with this because she said it a million times. Yeah. Or do you know what I mean? Like, you get in this weird bubble of, like, thinking, like, like, if you, like the other night I said cunt on stage. And I was like, ah, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Because it's such a fucking powerful word for yeah. people. And you're like, oh, I did it that. means nothing to me. I did I that in Aruba. I don't care at all. I did that in Aruba, my first show. <laughs> and there's kids. Like, you go to Aruba, here's the deal. It's like a corporate gig. Yeah. I'm going there to go to Aruba. And you have to cater. I make the choice. I'm going to sell my soul a little bit. And I'm going to do the show I'm supposed to do. I The first show there, I didn't cater anything. And I said, I said, cunt yeah. on stage. I went, what's the line? I said, uh, a vampire at my cunt in an alley book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that my wife's reading, my wife's reading her vampire ate my cunt in an alley book. Right. And I just looked down and saw little kids go. <laughs> yes, I know. And the, and the parent went like, <laughs> like they were slapped in the face. Well, it's weird too because people will people will listen to a lot of shit on a podcast or on television or YouTube or whatever. It, it doesn't bother them, but in real life, it mm-hmm. is so shocking because especially work right now, it's like there's so like you have to be a different human if you go to an actual job. Like you yeah. can't say anything wrong. Corporate. Yeah, it's very very corporate. And so then they're living in that bubble of, and then they come out and you walk out on stage, you know, especially if it's like a cold audience and they haven't been warmed up and you say some shit, it's like wild to watch them. You're like, <laughs> where, what have you been doing this whole, like you really haven't said anything. If, if me and Voss's late night conversations were ever revealed. Yes. 
Oh, there's so many things where he's called and said something to me that it's like so funny <laughs> that I could I can't even tell people what the joke is. Nobody. <laughs> right. I mean, nobody. <laughs> I mean, me and Voss, we play that game. I hope you. Yeah. You know? Did he ever tell you about that? No, no. Every time we hang up the phone, it's like, all right. I hope you I hope you hit a tree on the way home. Right. And he'd be like, he'll laugh. Judy Gold and I were doing it on text, and then she did one that I was like, mm. It's on text. I would never do it on text. <laughs> I would never do any of those in text. I don't want those written down anywhere. Holy shit. I know, but even we're, like, not immune. Yeah. It's so funny. All right. Well, what do you got going on? What's your plugs? What's happening? Nothing. Um, I don't know. Just Nothing. follow me on Instagram. Are you doing shows? I do shows all the time. But are you headlining? Are you road? Well, I it? go on the road a bit here and there and do stuff. But I mean, I'm not. I don't. With stand up, it's weird. I don't do any outreach. I just if people call me and have a gig that I'm available for, I usually do it. You're like Bill Murray. <laughs> I just don't with acting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just um. Like sometimes, like I'll put in at the stand and stuff in New York Comedy Club, and um, I don't know. I just sometimes I don't get it. Like on a Friday, I won't have any shows, and I'm so happy. I am. Too. <laughs> like, I had last Friday off. Yeah, it's like, and it was wild. I, I think it was eight thirty. I was on the couch <laughs> yeah, watching <I> SWAT, <laughs> right? And Dawn was reading the book, and Max was playing yeah. a game. And like, like this is like real life right I, here. Yeah, life. Yeah. I'm I'm so happy I've been living a like real life. Right. Because I think what for 25 years I didn't. Right. You're just grinding. Grinding mm -hmm. on the road. Wednesday, Thursday, right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday in the city. Right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the city. Right. And you took a day off once in a while, or you or you your vacations with cool gigs somewhere. Right. Where Dawn would come, right. Florida, right. some stupid shit. Right. Oh my God! It's like even I can't. People want to go to dinner. I'm like, let me line up a set. Uh, I can't come into the city without doing sets. I hate it. I'm so but glad. But I still I'm love, like, I love doing stand-up. Like, tonight's show, I love doing because it was so fun and no no pressure. No pressure, yeah. I love yeah. doing the Tuesday nights at the Pussycat, right. too. I love doing that. But I, I people are like, you don't come in Monday and Wednesday? No. Right. Mon Sunday, I'm done. I always come home Sunday. Monday, I'm off. Right. And then Wednesday, I'm done, too. I go home. I do the bonfire. Right. Monday and Wednesday, I go home. Right. I'm out. I'd rather be home. As soon as we're done with this, I'm going home. Right. Going the fuck home. I got my fudgical waiting for me. I got a couple more sets. You got more sets? Yeah. I got nothing. I'm done. I'm going to go over to the stand. Ugh. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, uh... I, I want to say thanks for coming on. I miss you. I haven't seen you in a while. I miss you, too. Congratulations on the new house. Thank you. I know your husband was freaking out about it. I mean, it's a big deal. It's a big step. It's really not. Fine. You guys have a house you deserve. Yeah, I agree. You have a built-in pool, finally. Yeah. And now we can come over and throw parties. Right. And, and swim. Yes. Right? But are you gonna, are you gonna, but we're going to have to bring our own meat. No, he's back on me. Oh, thank God. That was... Him and Raina, they left me. Yeah, because being a vegan is boring as shit. It's boring. Yes. I mean... It's... I think of it as, like, eating living things is disgusting. So I don't think of it like it's for people, you know... Is that because you had a friend, a cow friend in Canada? I don't know. People always ask me that. Because your buddy was because a Because I like actually, I like animals. I don't know. I don't know why. I love animals. In this, my belly. I, I've never real. I feel like I is a little bit of a cheat because I've never, I've always been a little grossed out by meat. Really? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I know. People do. I love it. I love it. I love it. Right. I love it. But I also love vegetables. I love all the shit you like. Right. And yeah. dirt. Huh? Dirt. I love dirt. I'm a fucking piece of shit white trash that had a spoonful of dirt because my mother didn't want to play with me. And my sister hated Here's me. Here's some matches. Get out back. Yeah, go light a fire. Yeah. Why don't you go to the church, become an altar boy, see if he can uh, help you out a little bit. It was great. Nobody cared where we were or what I we know. were doing. It's the best. That's why we're fucking funny. Yeah. Now the new comics are fucking... It's, it's, you know what it is? It's like there's a sensitivity to everybody that's like really hard to deal with sometimes. The conversations at the table, once I kind of step in and it's very analytical 
And right. uh, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? Very, it's just not fun. <laughs> right. It's like sometimes it's like you're listening to somebody's like reading a, a New York Times article or something. You're like, hey. Yeah, it's it's very serious. Right. Or thoughtful. Right. I hate thoughtful comedians. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate a thoughtful table of comics. When you walk up and it's like, yeah, man, I was trying this. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Listen. And right. it's like, or you I, do a joke and they go, what? You're yeah. Like, oh, come on. I love sitting down and seeing Voss go, yuck. Right. I, I just love a fun table of comics that just right. smash each other. Right. Talk about, yeah, it's the fucking. I mean, that's where podcasting as we know it was the the from hanging at a comedy club with other comedians. Right. What would that's you, the most fun, like that's why I'm a comedian as much as being a comedian, as much as going on stage and writing jokes is like hanging out hang. with comedians. Yes. That's all this is. Right. That's right. all this this, this whole it's more fun than this, but like I do <laughs> I'm enjoying it also. <laughs> We've been very analytical. <laughs> we've been very we've been doing the thing you hate. <laughs> I've been doing the thing we hate. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap it up. Bonnie, uh, you have nothing coming up except the stand, but you have social media. Yeah, I have social media. I, I do have stuff, but I don't know. What is your social media? I'm doing ver, Verve. What's it called? Verve on... Uh, is that Danny Braff's room? Yeah, August 17th. Is it Autistic Danny? Yes. Yeah. The whole crew here is artistic. Artistic or autistic? Autist. Yeah, well, I would say like men are... There's no women that are autistic? Yes, but I'm saying all men are. No, I'm autistic? <laughs> yes. I'm not that smart. I'm not that smart. I need Danny. Autistic Danny. I, not all autistic people are smart. You know that, right? No, but a lot of them are good. Danny's good. Joe's good. They Max are, is good. They're good at certain things. I mean, he's not good at saying hello and goodbye. Right. Conversationally, Danny, I've literally had to tell him how to... Hey. Well, that's the great thing about him, though. It's like he'll text you. You won't text him back. He doesn't even know to be mad. Like, he doesn't, he's not slighted. We're, we're good at Dude. counting matches. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't uh -huh. know how to, he, he doesn't know how to be, so, he, like, he has no social skills. Right. Like, he'll answer the I phone. I like that about him, though. That's one of the things I like about him. I don't like that. Like, I've never had to hug him or anything. You know? Oh, I, mean? I don't want to hug him yeah, at all. Like, I've ne like, it's always like. Oh. It's like it feels good to be awkward with him because I can just get away. You know? Yeah, hugging. I've tried to hug him one time, like a goodbye, and it was like going to a, oh. like an elephant seal trying to hug that. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I tried hugging you once, and you said, don't do that, and I've thought about how uncomfortable it was ever since. You, I said that to you? Yeah, you said, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> I like put my boundaries up. <laughs> um, would you, and her show is what date is the show, dude? August 17th. In Somerville. Uh, Somerville, New Jersey. Somerville, New Jersey. Comedy of Verve, August 17th with Bonnie McFarlane. There you go. Bonnie, you're the best. I, I would love to fucking do a show with you. Let's do it. Don't we have to have Voss in it, though. No. You know he'd be like, why am I not in it? He's fine. You sure? Yes. We should do something. Yeah. I have, an, I have an idea. Okay. Let's talk about it while you're on strike. Well, yeah. I could talk about it, but that's it. Hey, well, you'd have to write it. Right. <laughs> right, where's the camera? That's what everybody's always yeah, like. You can not. still write, right? It's like, no. You're you not gonna can't. Write. You can't, right? You're not gonna write. <laughs> right? All right, let's talk about it. Uh make sure you go check out the me, Robert Kelly Live. I have a little tour I'm doing this summer, Burlington, Vermont on the uh, 20th of uh July, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Second show just added. We have a, a six and an eight thirty. Uh, uh, that's the 27th, the 28th. I'm in Nashua, New Hampshire. And then the 29th, I'm in Laconia. That's up. All the shows are near my tiny house up in New Hampshire. I booked all the shows. I believe Danny's trying to book something up in Portsmouth, right? Where are we going? What is it called? What do you mean? <laughs> the room, the monkey room, remember? This is the first I'm hearing of this. Nice talking to you. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Let's, let's, let's speed this up. I got to go. I gotta Anyways, go. I, I knew you were going to do this. I knew you were going to do oh. this. I really? Knew, you always do it. Why? Every time you're on my show, you make it like it's a, at the end, you like, I don't want to be, like you have some, um, I don't know, some alternative pride. Well, I was supposed to be somewhere at 930. Is it my fault? No. Uh, no. I'm sorry. Danny said that I would be done by now. Yeah, well, Danny, you're a twat. Sorry. Bro. You did say 10. Okay. I just have to be there at 10. 
There you go. Uh, well, you're out. You're done. I'm just doing plugs. ComicWearables.com, YKWD. Bonnie, one of the funniest people, one of the talented people. But don't, oh. no, don't judge by this appearance. Why? I felt like I was tired and not being funny, but I can be. I don't think you're, I think you're great. You always do this, too. Okay. You always tumble out of control. <laughs> you literally, every time you've been on my podcast, it's, are we done? <laughs> Didn't I say that tonight? I said yeah. that. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah I was like, she, I hope she doesn't tumble out of control. I love that somebody sees me. Well, because you're f so funny, you're interesting to talk to, and then at the end you're like, are we done? <laughs> I turn into a cunt. <laughs> Not a cunt. I think there's something inside of you that feels like and what I want to let the fans know that I didn't like it too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, I agree with you. Hey, I can be better than this. You're fucking great. This is a great show. I'm glad you came on. Thank you. And uh, I will see you next time. You guys are the best fans in the world. Danny, what do you got? Follow always... me on Instagram at Danny Braff and come to Comedy at Verve the third Thursday of every month. And what do you got, Maxi? Uh, just Max Marcus Comedy on all social media. Joe, what do you have besides a hot wife? Uh, the Cheese Show is back with both of us on YouTube. Just search Cheese Show. You guys are the best fans in the world. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, we'll see you next week on You Know What, Dude? You've been listening to the YKWD Podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.